tell. <laughs> it is your boy Icon, who's probably the last person on the planet to put up a Blue Beetle movie review. I saw it on Friday. I'm recording this on Sunday. And right out the gate, I loved this movie. Like I was on, you know, I was on YouTube and social media and everything. And there are a lot of reviews out there where people were talking about the movie and they were giving their genuine opinions. And then, of course, there's always going to be the people that are out there. They're just purposely like, oh, it's trash. Don't watch it. There's an agenda, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, like, I don't like I said, I don't do easy clickbait. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I guarantee you the majority of the people that posted videos trash in the movie, they did legitimately like it. But they know talking shit about it, it will get them attention. So I'm just looking for people who give genuine reviews. Go to tacosandgeek.com where Sean and Justin do a Blue Beater review. Go to Gotham Geek Girl on YouTube where she does her Blue Beater review. And again, honest people who give honest opinions. So now talking about this Blue Beetle. So it, uh, it, it, it was better, like it was, it was better than I thought it would be. You know, it was, it, the casting was spot on and the family dynamic I thought was very good. The family dynamic was the only thing that, um, you know, that, I was a little concerned about, but intrigued at the same time, because again, and I think I said this before, we always see superhero movies where, especially when it's a young person that becomes a superhero, where they, they go through this whole stretch where they have to hide that they're a superhero from their family, and they got to come up with all these ridiculous lies to tell their family for why they're disappearing and not being in certain situations. But this is one of the first situations where he flat out turned into the Blue Beetle in front of his, like his family knew he was the Blue Beetle, like there wasn't a secret, there wasn't the hiding, there wasn't the like, oh my God, you know, like where's Jaime, and then, you you know, he's off saving kittens. The family was actually in on it, you know, like the entire time. And the director, producers or whatever, they said the movie was going to be Latin as fuck. And <laughs> I thought that added an awesome dynamic to this particular project. So the movie starts where like he's coming back from, you know, college. Like he graduated college. Hi, good old Jaime. And when he comes, oh, we're going to spoil the shit out of this. <laughs> so like just to let y'all know, like spoilers out. The is ass. So we, <laughs> he comes back from college. And then when he comes back from college, he's having with his family and they're asking him what he's going to do and then he's just like thinking about grad school and because i think he went to be a lawyer he went for like lawyer communications or whatever and then that's when unfortunately the family tells him that they're losing the house and you know the, his father had a heart attack and then you know when they mentioned the dad having a heart attack i was just like well because like when he had the dad, I was just like, oh, you got a dad. Cause like, I didn't see the dad in any of the trailers. Like we saw the mom, the grandmother, the sister, the uncle. I was like, we didn't see a dad. So I was like, so he does have a dad. And then when the dad was just like, yeah, I had a heart attack, you know, but it's not a big deal. I'll be fine. I was like, uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> so I was just like, you mentioned his heart attack for a reason. So then Jaime felt bad and he was just like, well shit. He said now that, you know, Poppy, you know, like he, you know, because he had the heart attack, he's like, I gotta do something to help the family. I gotta get a job. So him and his sister, his sister actually got him a job working at a hotel where the two of them it was very typical <laughs> like they were like the typical house cleaner like the spanish house cleaners and they were folding towels and everything his sister was very entertaining because i mean it's weird because she's like a cross between like thelma from scooby-doo and like ugly betty the character <laughs> ugly with the glasses and everything but i liked his you know like i liked his sister's dynamic she was funny and she she played off of him very well. Like the two of them had a very good dynamic together. So while they're at, while they're sitting there working, you know, doing the house cleaning and everything, then enters the female love interest, which is the daughter of Ted Cord. And I was waiting for the Ted Cord reference because Ted, you can't. Well, they actually he did he got a job at Cord Industries. Both of them are working at, at Cord Industries, and you know, said so the Ted Cord's daughter is here. And Ted Cord's sister is here because his sister runs the company. The daughter has a seat on the board. She actually has her dad's seat because her dad is gone. And in every single DC lore that mentions the Blue Beetle that I'm aware of, Ted Cord is always dead. They always say Ted Cord died. Jaime Reyes became, you know, got to be the Blue Beetle. And on Young Justice, he was always complaining that I never got to meet my mentor. But in this, they kept saying things like, "Oh, ever since your fa ever since your father was gone, or ever since Ted left and never came back." And I'm like, "Why are they talking about him like he's still alive? <laughs> like, they just made it seem like he was like some deadbeat dad that just decided to walk away from his responsibility." I was like, "Isn't this man dead? Like, why are we speaking about him like he just randomly went somewhere and like never came back?" I thought that was weird. Um, I could have done without the whole scene about his sister taking his shit <laughs> like it was funny but i was just like i was like oh uh, no i was like thank god i ate before i came in here well anyway so him and his sister his sister they're cleaning like the, they're cleaning the uppity rich bathroom where all the bathroom people are and then the sister decides to use the laboratory while jaime is standing watch he he notices that 
Ted Cord's daughter and sister are having an argument because she wants like the, the the sister she wants the company to build weapons and you know and sell weapons and then the daughter she's just like no that's not what my dad wanted and I can't let you get away with it so the two of them are beefing and going back and forth and then after that well she kind of got in her face and she was just like I'll stop you by any means necessary if you want to ruin my dad's legacy and then the and then the sister well her aunt the sister she ended up getting security to go kick the daughter out of the building and then when the security guard grabbed her by the arm Jaime stepped in because she was a pretty girl. Jaime stepped in and he was just like, hey, don't touch her like that. And then he tried to like stand up for her. And then the aunt was just like, well, fuck it. You and your sister, you're both fired. <laughs> you know, and he kicked them and then like fired her and kicked them both out of the building. The daughter ended up feeling bad. She was like, come by Ted Cord Industries tomorrow. And I think I can get you a job somewhere in the building to make up for, you know, for you getting fired. So the next day he goes down to the building and then we get the scene where his family drops him off at the job interview. And then they're all like chatting his name, making him look bad because his family all but his business and then he goes into the building and that was a funny scene too because when he goes into the building the girl at the front desk she was asking him a question she was like you know who are you and he was like i'm jaime reyes i'm you know i'm here to see ted cord's daughter and then she was just like okay have a seat jamie and then he was like no it's it's actually pronounced jaime and she's like oh, right over there jamie and i thought that was funny because <laughs> it is jamie like you know like it's jamie so then the daughter she ends up sneaking around ted cord industries and then when she goes into the secret lab, she finds the scarab that the sister is doing experiments on because the sister found the scarab earlier on in the episode, in, in the movie. So she sees the scarab, she steals the scarab, tries to escape with it, and then that triggers the security alarms and all hell breaks loose. And then she takes the scarab and puts it into a big belly burger, <laughs> a big belly burger hamburger box. If you watch the Arrowverse, you know about that big belly burger. And then when she puts the big belly burger thing in the box, she's trying to leave the building with the scarab. But then she runs into Jaime because Jaime's just like, hey, remember me you know you said you can get me a job and then she was just like listen she was like i don't have time for this but she said do me a favor she said you want a job you want to do something you want to help she said take this box take it home and don't open it she said i'm gonna come get it just get it out of the building so he takes it he, you know he goes home and then while he's in the kitchen that's the scene that we see where his family's just like oh you didn't open it and then he's like no so then his family convinces him to open it because they open his business and then when he opens it you know the scarab ends up like activating and then it clinches onto his spine and infuses him and that was kind of gross because the scene with him actually transforming into the blue like that shit kind of dragged on for a little bit because he was yelling for a hot minute and then, then it does some weird thing like when he turns into the blue beetle like him transforming and the costume turning on it rips all of his clothes off and i'm like that was just put in for comic relief obviously but it kept happening throughout the whole episode throughout the whole movie where his clothes kept getting ripped off so he's the blue beetle now the scarab turns him into the blue beetle and then the scarab is just like oh calibrating rocket ship and it's just like you know doing a checklist like through all of its like functions so it's flying him around the city he goes into outer space he cuts a bus in half and everything and then after the suit had calibrated itself and everything was good then he ends up going back home he goes back home he passes out his family wakes up and then the daughter shows up and then she's just like oh what happened where's the scarab and then he's like the shit's on my back <laughs> you know, like how do we get this thing off my back everybody got mad at the girl for putting the thing on the back and then she was just like no you know that's not that's not what we do and whatever the case may be we then find out that the sister she she was using the scarab because there was the original there was the original blue beetle i forgot the guy's name but there was a guy who used to be the blue beetle the scarab was attached to that person's spine he was friends with ted cord and he went on as the blue beetle when that guy died the scarab released itself from its body because the scarab can only attach itself to a living host but the scarab also has to choose you that's what they were saying and the scarab didn't choose ted cord so and I guess because Ted Cord didn't want the damn thing attached to his spine either, Ted Cord ended up, instead of Ted Cord using the scarab because he couldn't, he used the scarab and his friend before him, which inspired him to create his own Blue Beetle persona. But because his sister knew about the original Blue Beetle, and she knew about how he transformed and everything she started building technology based on that design of having like like weaponized armor putting itself over human bodies and having humans turn into like armored weapons so that you know so that was her whole plan but she needed the scarab to try to figure out the technology codes to get her technology to transfer the way the blue beetle technology transfers so she was you know so, so she searched for jaime she's trying to figure out where he is jaime and the daughter they end up going back to the building so she can get a wire 
watch, which was the key. And then when she got the watch, which was the key, they got ran up on by um, the military <laughs> or whoever. They're shooting at them. And then there was this one particular dude that worked for the sister. He had the original prototype. He had the prototype for the sister's armored weapon. So he put his armored weapon on. He fought Jaime in the streets. I thought they was going to call him the Black Beetle, but they didn't call him Black Beetle. The two of them had a fight in the streets. And then eventually, like, the uncle showed up, which was played by George Lopez. He put him in the car, and then they drove off to her to her old childhood house, which is where the original Ted Cord lived. And she shows them the Beetle Cave, like Blue Beetle's original cave. And that was nice to see. And they even said that, because when he said that, he was just like, wow, like, Ted Cord was the Blue Beetle. Because George Lopez, he knew about the Blue Beetle. Because he told Jaime, he was just like, yeah, he was like, back when I was a kid, we had the Blue Beetle. Like, he was a superhero, but he wasn't on the level of a Batman or a Superman or anything, you know, so he was just kind of like low key with it. But we you know we did have a Blue Beetle, but he said, I didn't know Ted Cord was the Blue Beetle. And then he was looking at all his technology. He's like, his technology is cool, but it's not up to par, you know, with a lot of like, you know, the top notch superheroes. So they're, they're basically trying to say blue, like Ted Cord Blue Beetle was like a D-list, <laughs> like a D-list superhero. But he had his Blue Beetle costumes and everything. Like George Lopez was going crazy over all the tech. And then while they were, you know, while they were looking at all the tech and everything, Jaime finds out that the sister found out where he lived and targeted his family. So Blue Beetle goes flying back to go save his family. This big thing ensues where like, you know, the, the army tried to snatch up the family. Blue Beetle was protecting them. Like the Black Beetle guy, he showed up again. Him and Jaime had a battle. And while everybody was fighting and while the family was trying to get away, unfortunately, the dad had a heart attack and his father died. They ended up capturing Jaime. They brought him back to their their secret hideout, you know. And that was a very emotional scene because that that part got me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that part got me because there was a moment because earlier in the movie when Jaime was fighting the soldiers the first time, the scarab because because even with the scarab. In the beginning, the scarab was just talking to him like a regular AI. It was just like, oh, system functions online. Oh, calibrating weapons. And I was just like, are, does, the, does the AI actually have artificial intelligence or is it just a basic AI? But as the, the, the movie progressed and as you saw like him using the Blue Beetle power more, the scarab went from being regular basic computer AI to she actually started, because it was a female voice for the AI, she started developing a personality and she actually did start talking talking to him more like they were having a real conversation because when he was fighting the soldiers in the beginning he had taken one of the soldiers down and then the scarab said recommend termination of target and then he was like no he was like we're not going to do that we're not killers because like the um, the scarab kept trying to kill people kept trying to murder people but throughout the entire movie Jaime kept saying to the scarab over and over again I'm not a killer I'm not a killer we're not killers that's not what we do so you know, it was just something that where the two of them fought on, but the Scarab eventually listened to him and the Scarab decided not to kill, but the Scarab didn't want to kill people. So then when his family was in trouble, now he pissed off and, <laughs> like, and now he want to kill people. Like when his daddy died, like all bets are off now, now he want to murk something. And, you know, that he, but he got captured. I said he got taken back to the secret hideout. His father died. And then when his father died, his family, along with the um, Ted Cord's daughter, they came together and they was like, listen, we have to save Jaime. And that's when the grandma came out of nowhere because she was just like, oh, she's like, the time for crying isn't now. She's like, we have to rescue Jaime. And I'm like, how y'all gonna rescue Jaime? <laughs> so the daughter takes them back to Ted Cord's house. And when they're going through all the Blue Beetle tech, the man had a Blue Beetle mobile. It was this big ass blue ship that was shaped like a beetle. The whole family gets into the Blue Beetle mobile and they're taking all of Ted Cord's weapons, like his guns, you know, like his gauntlets and all that stuff. Cause they're about to storm the castle to go rescue Hyman. The grandmother, for some reason, knew how to operate a machine gun. <laughs> she never explained it. Everybody was looking at her like she was crazy. And they were just like, you know, at some point, grandma, they could, they could call her Nana. They was like, grandma needs to tell us, <laughs> you know, like how she knows. Because there was a moment where she had the thing. And then somebody was like, how do you know how to perfectly hold the gun and everything? So I was like, that, that was funny. So they stormed the castle. They start taking, and then this is the funny thing, because again, throughout the whole movie, Jaime was just like, oh, I'm not a killer, I'm not a killer, I'm not a killer. His sister killed people, his mama killed people, his uncle killed people, his grandma killed, like everybody in his family murked something except, everybody was killing except him, and I was like, that's hilarious. So they, they get to the, they get to the headquarters, they're trying to rescue him. The sister has him tied up to a machine because she's trying to take the technology, like, you know, like all the ones and twos and the code and everything, she's trying to put the code from the blue 
Blue Beetle technology into her own technology. One of her scientists said to her, he was just like, listen, if you do that, it could kill him. And then she was like, well, he's this, he's expendable anyway. So she was like, go ahead, Sanchez, and press the button. And this was funny too, because there was this one particular Spanish scientist that worked with the sister. And throughout the entire movie, she kept calling him Sanchez. And I didn't think anything of it. So then at the end of the movie, <laughs> when he got to the point where he couldn't take anymore and he got tired of the abuse when he he decided to save Jaime because the machine that he was hooked up to one of his relatives blew the machine up and then when the sh and then when he got released from the machine the sister saw him about to escape and then she told the scientist she was like Sanchez stop him and then the guy got mad and he was like my name isn't Sanchez damn it he was like I'm Hector De La Riz Cruz so you know some he had like 17 days but his name wasn't Sanchez and when he said that I was like why is his name not Sanchez you would call him Sanchez <laughs> I thought his name was Sanchez so he gets mad he frees Jaime Jaime escapes you know and then after that like she six of the black beetle on him she's like you know go get him Jaime escapes unfortunately um Sanchez died <laughs> you know the sister and the mom and everybody like they um they got separated at some point the sister actually like the sister was cool because if she like gets into better physical shape because of her personality and the way she was handling the situation with fighting the soldiers with the with the blue beetle cord weapons she could actually be his sidekick she can take some blue beetle tech get her own costume and actually be his side his sidekick because she was actually she was actually cool with it you know but so then <laughs> like he's so he so he escapes so while he's escaping the scarab is trying to recalibrate Jaime couldn't fight at this point so then he get he finds his family he gets everybody back on the beetle ship but then they were just like oh where's my uncle and you know where's where's the um, the girl Ted Cord's daughter They're just like oh they're back inside and then Jaime goes to go rescue them so then after that when he goes outside he actually you know he, he rescues the daughter but then the black beetle shows up he tries to kill them George Lopez shows up and he tries to save him and then black beetle shot at George Lopez and he was presumably dead so when Jaime thought that he had killed his uncle that's when Jaime got pissed the scarab rebooted he put the armor on and he proceeded to whoop black beetles ass and then there was a moment where like he he basically had him down like he decapitated his suit like the guy was out of commission that's when he was turning the blue beetle tech into a sword and into a gun and this side uh, you know the third but then he was about to kill him and then the scarab was just like no Jaime he's she was like the scarab was like he's defeated he's down he was like no but he has to pay for what he's done and then the scarab had to remind him she was like but we're not killers Jaime Reyes and I was like damn that was nice because <laughs> they even said because they said that when the scarab attaches itself to him it's also syncing with his brain so their brainwave functions are coming together and they're slowly becoming one and you knew the point when they became one because not only did the scarab actually you know tell him she was like remember we're not killers and the two of them were actually talking like two normal people back and forth having like regular intelligent conversation the fact that he's mexican also rubbed up on the scarab and because there was a moment where when blue bead was about to fight and knock out all the soldiers to save his family he was like are you ready to do this scarab and she was like de nada <laughs> so i'm like now the scarab started talking spanish and i was like that was the cutest part of the whole movie when the scarab when the scarab started talking to him in spanish so i was like this is i actually like this like this is war like like that that, that warms your heart <laughs> you know because like, like the two of them are now on so they saved the day and then and, and then the end after the scarab told him that we're not killers he had a change of heart and then instead of killing the black beetle guy he extended the hand of friendship the scarab also told him that when she was connected to his suit and they were trying to do the data transfer she said that she got into his mind as she saw his memories and she showed Jaime memories of when Ted Cord's sister murdered that guy's family when he was a child she kidnapped him from his country brought him overseas and she used him as a guinea pig to do her evil deeds so then that's when Jaime really felt bad he was like shit you're a victim you know just like the rest of us and then you know like I said he extended the hand of friendship he helped the guy up and then when he helped the guy up the guy actually went to the sister, grabbed her, and brought her into back into the building because the building was going to explode. And then he, and then she was like, "What are you doing?" And then he was just like, "I'm making amends for all the sins that I've caused." So he took Ted Cord's sister into the building, and it blew up with both of them in it, and he killed the sister. And I was like, "Well, shit!" <laughs> like that's one way to get your revenge. But then the family goes off into the ship, they fly away, and everything's fine. So now Ted Cord's sister's dead. The daughter, she's now in charge of Cord Industries, and she said 
that we're gonna to do we're gonna take court industries and we're gonna do justice by it and we're gonna turn it into a good company that you could be proud of the reyes family had a funeral for the father there was a very touching moment where jaime actually spoke to his father in the spirit plane and then he told him he was just like i take you as far as i can take you nino and he was just like it's now your responsibility to protect the family to protect that familia and then after that you know but then after that, they had a funeral for the dad the whole city like the whole town came to you know help celebrate the dad and everything ted cord's daughter showed up she said that she'll pay for their house to be refixed and everything i thought they was going to move the family into the mansion but you know and then after that her and jaime kissed and then he grabbed her snatched her up and flew her away to god knows where i guess they was about to do it they was about to do the deed and then right the right before they kissed the scarab had said to jaime she was like i'm noticing an increased intense level of blood flow and he was like shut up and then you know that that was how the movie ended with the two of them flying off and then you know in the post credit scene the in the beetle cave because they had activated ted cord's computer it actually got a signal to wherever he was and then ted cord was just like hey whoever turned my computer on if you can hear me tell my daughter that i'm alive i'm alive somewhere like ted cord's still alive they never said where he was or what happened to him i'm just like is this like an atom situation where he got shrunk to the size of an atom and nobody can find him but he you know he said that he's alive ted cord's alive y'all so that was that's different <laughs> you know that's how the movie ended and thank you for tuning in this is really good I mean, this is really good so I, like I said i enjoyed it like i enjoyed the family dynamic i enjoyed the whole dynamic with I lo like i love jaime in the role like i love jaime like i said i like the sister i love I like Jaime and the sister together as a team. Like, I like the two of them together as a team. You know, um, Ted Cord's daughter, she's a nice mix into the fold because there has to be somebody that knows what the fuck is going on, <laughs> like, with all this technology stuff. The sister's dead now, so, like, we, we ain't got nothing to do about that. <laughs> but, um, I, like I said, it's, it's sad because now I actually want James Gunn to keep this project. Because, you know, James Gunn, obviously, he's supposed to be starting over, you know, with the DCU. But I'm just like, you should keep this one. And he probably will keep this one because he was there at the red carpet. Like, he showed up at the red carpet. And if if this wasn't a project that James Gunn didn't intend on keeping, there's no way he would have showed up to the premiere in the red carpet. So hopefully we'll get another. Well, they, we, we should get another Blue Beetle 2 now because they said Ted Kord's alive. We'll see how that factors into the new DCU as things progress forward. And I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. But share your questions, comments, and or concerns down down below if you saw the movie already like what was your favorite part about the movie like who is your favorite character like i said i'm i'm interested like it threw me off at first when the, when the scarab because like normally like you're used to in young justice you're used to the scarab like being a male's voice which sounds just like him but they decided to make the scarab a female voice so i was like that was an interesting dynamic but like i said but when the scarab started talking spanish i was just like yeah this is some cool shit like they're a team now and like I said, we'll share your questions comments and concerns down below and we'll continue to talk about it check out my other reviews y'all because i got my adventures of super man on the channel i got harley quinn the season finale of warrior that justice league rwxy <laughs> crossover thing and we're gonna keep rolling on to more superhero goodness so until next time guys for some more movie reviews for dc marvel and everything else in between take care as always get your beat alone and i'm not this yeah!